Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is as always Harry Wolf and I am your guide to the land of JavaScript and the front-end ecosystem. Today's topic is one that may be a little bit old but one I've never talked about before and I have I think a good way of possibly explaining this topic and maybe cementing some ideas about it that have confused you in the past. Today, we will be talking about Redux. In particular, I'll be answering the question, what is Redux? Now, I'm not gonna delve into all the things external to Redux, like should you still use it with React? Like, is it good, is it bad? I don't care about that. Today, we're just gonna learn what is Redux. When I teach Redux to people, the first thing that I talk about is how most libraries that you use, most, most applications, most libraries are very API heavy. Uh, for example, jQuery has a very large API, a lot of methods, a lot of different arguments you pass to those methods, and that just becomes rote memorization. Do you know that there is a has class method? Do you know if there is a toggle method? That's just a large API that you have to learn. And most applications are like that, but Redux is not. Redux is actually very conceptually heavy and very API small, which is unusual for a piece of technology. And that's really where the big cliff to understanding Redux comes in, is if you can understand the why behind the way in which Redux works, then actually using Redux becomes a lot easier. If you can understand the motivation, then you can understand the end result. To give a little bit of backstory, because I always find these things interesting and of note, uh, Redux is a pattern for maintaining state that is actually used in other languages. In particular, uh, Erlang. I'm not sure if you're aware of this language called Erlang. Uh, actually, WhatsApp is built with Erlang. Uh, Erlang is a language that was made in the 70s for a telephony company, uh, Ericsson, I believe, in Europe. And the hallmark feature of Erlang was its high concurrency with no errors. That you could have hundreds of thousands of threads going in an Erlang application, all talking to each other and never having an issue. Highly concurrent, which is good when you have a lot of people making phone calls. And the way that it's able to do that is it follows this thing called the actor model. Now these are just, the actor model is a fancy way of essentially describing what Redux is. So the actor model used in Erlang is the same thing that Redux uses in itself, which is to say that Redux is not fully original. Uh, nothing really is. It's hard to be fully original in today's landscape, but the concepts that you learn with Redux can actually be applied elsewhere. So the words that I'm gonna be talking about a lot, the concept of Redux itself is, that we're gonna be talking about a lot today is uh, stores, actions, and reducers. Those are the three things that we're going to be kind of playing around a lot with. Uh, the store in Redux is where all your state is stored. It is stored inside this, your state's and stored inside your store. And the only way that external code can read that state is by calling a get state method. You can't directly modify the state inside a store. For that, you actually have to dispatch an action to the store. So there's some part of your code that can call store.dispatch, it'll dispatch an action, and then internal to the store, you'll actually, when you create that store, you configure it with what's called a reducer. That action is given to the store, which runs it through a reducer, which then dictates the next state of the store. And the benefit of that is that all state changes are maintained inside the store, decided upon by a reducer. So it's very easy to understand, given this action coming in, I know what my reducer knows how to react to, and that'll produce the correct next state from the store. 
I'm going to say it again because it's a lot of things going on here. You have a store which holds your action. To change that, sorry, you have a store which holds your state. To change that state, you have to dispatch an action to the store. That store takes that action, runs it through the reducer, which produces the next state that can then be used by people talking to the store. Now, I think the easiest way to kind of show you what I mean is to maybe live program our own Redux store. Does that sound scary to you? Because it sounds scary to me. Uh, this is gonna be a very simplistic version of Redux, one that has a lot of these safeguards and edge cases and niceties that's built into Redux itself, not there. But to actually write your own Redux AP, API compatible Redux library isn't too hard. Uh, so we have here the website of Redux. I'm gonna to go to the API and I'm gonna look at this create store page. And I'm just gonna kind of steal the API here as a basis for things. Uh, we have this create store, which takes in a reducer and a preloaded state. I'm ignoring enhancers for now. That's not in scope for this video. So I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna make the API that we have to uh, abide by in our store. So we're gonna do const store equals create store. Uh, it takes in a reducer as the first argument and the initial state, which for now I'm going to have be not present uh, right there. So what create store returns is a store. And if I go to the store, I can see that these are the store methods on here. These are the methods that can be called on that store. So I'm actually gonna copy this and make my function create store function. First argument is reducer. Second argument is initial state with one I. And then what this returns is those methods to get us off the ground here. Uh, I'm not gonna be worrying about replace reducer, not in scope for this. So for now, what I'm gonna start with here is let state equals initial state. So when someone calls get state, what I'm gonna return is essentially a new copy of the state. And the reason for that is because, as I said before, the state of the store can only be modified via actions. If I were to return the actual state object, then any other piece of code could modify the state itself through some imperative way. And I don't want that to be the case. I want you to have to go through an action to change the state. That works fine. Uh, dispatch. Dispatch is how you actually dispatch an action to the store to update the state. Try to be very careful with my words here because the concepts are so uh, dense. So dispatch is going to say uh, next state and we're gonna call our reducer with the action and the current state because this is how you can actually modify that. And then we can return next state. So this might be all I need it right now. Uh, this is this, this is this, I'm gonna do that. There we go, cool. So let's actually test to see if this works. So if I do uh, console log store.getState, uh, and also what I'm gonna do here, oh, I have to make a reducer, right. So I make a reducer called counter, takes in an action and the current state, and I make a switch statement, which I love. Uh, I'm gonna use the convention of Redux where an action, an action can be anything. It could be a Boolean, it could be a string, it could be an integer, it could be an array, it could also be an object. An object is a little bit more expressive on what you can do on there. And there's this thing called a standard React action, which I'm gonna follow. Essentially that means that a action is an object that by default has two properties on it, a type property and a payload property. And the type property is the action type that lets you let's a reducer listen to know how to change the state. So here I'm gonna have the type go up and I'm return a new state object and have uh, count equals uh, state count plus one. 
And then I'm gonna do this again for down. Down, down, baby. Uh, like this, and then by default, I'm just gonna return the actual state itself. Now here I'm returning new objects to denote that there was a state change. And I'm also gonna set a default state here, which is to say that count is zero. So counter gets put into here. And let's try this empty object, not what I expected. Oh, again, this is because uh, uh, I'm not running a fully fledged Redux store, but let's do uh, store dot dispatch type. And let's say up. We'll save that. And of course, action type dispatch reducer action state. Oh, right. Next state needs to be applied to, and they actually don't return anything from dispatch. So we'll say state equals next state. We'll save that. And here we have count equals one. And of course, I can do the same thing here and do it up again. And do call that again. And we have one and two. So I'm able to dispatch correctly to this. Now, another part of the API for a Redux store is be able to subscribe to be notified when the state changes. So for that, I'm going to make a listeners array. And in here, and just to show you what it looks like, what I can do down here is do store dot subscribe. That's just a empty callback. And I'm going to have this say uh, one store dot get state such that every time the Redux store changes, all my subscribe functions are going to be called. So that's one, that's two. So subscribe is going to be uh, uh, length equals listeners dot push listen uh, push returns the new length of an array, which I'm going to use because what's returned from subscribe is a way to unsubscribe. So what I'm going to do here is do listeners dot splice. I'm going to take the uh, length minus one and delete one. So I'm starting at this number, the index that I made it at, and then how many I'm deleting is just that one. So now if I run this again, one, two, store dot subscribe, right. I'm not actually doing with it, anything with it yet. So in here, what I have to do is I have to say, if uh, next state doesn't equal state, only then will I update state. Then I'm going to call every listener for each L, L, just like a layout. We'll do that down there. One, two, count one. One, two, count two. And then I can also go down here and get one. And then after, before this last one, I can unsubscribe from the first listener. And then we only have two being subscribe to as well. So that is the basic API of Redux. You can't directly get this, the state from the store. You have to do by get state. And this is the API itself. That's the basic building blocks of Redux. Again, it's concept heavy and the API itself is pretty low lift. But understanding the why behind it hopefully understands why it works the way it does. I'll be interested to hear your questions about this. I might have to do some fault videos on this as well because it's a very hard concept that I don't expect you to get on the first go around. Uh, next video, I'm actually going to be talking about combined reducers, which is another utility function provided by Redux to make it easier to scale your Redux reducers to many reducers. Uh, so stay tuned for that video that should come up next week. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, become one. Uh, newsletter, Patreon, all those fun links in the links below. And I will see you again in the next video next week.